Michael Crichton, The Lost World. This is the sequel to Jurassic Park. 430 pages long. There is seven sections called configurations. Uh, the chapters or sections were really, really short, um, maybe two or three pages, just like the first one. They kind of have like single word titles in between. So it's really easy to put down and pick up. But really, to sum it all up, it's the same format as Jurassic Park. A group of five or six people visit an island full of dinosaurs. There's a good group and a bad group, pretty much. And there's kids involved. That's <laughs> the emphasis of the entire plot. Um, but I, I enjoyed it. I was hesitant to read it at first. I read some reviews online that it was literally the same thing as the first book. So I was kind of unsure. And this one centers on the mathematician. Ian Malcolm from the first book. So if you didn't like him in the first book, this book probably isn't for you. However, uh, there was enough different about it that it made it interesting for me. Uh, he, Ian Malcolm, was really the only holdover from the previous book. So uh, the mathematician, part of the group, he has all these connections, which I don't know. I don't know anything about mathematicians. But like in this book, he seemed like he was connected to everybody. Like he had, you know, people who were studying African hunting patterns. He had people at the zoo that he knew. He knew these rich people and geologists. And it's it like, it seemed like he knew everyone, which I don't know how, who or how a mathematician is, but that just seemed a little off to me. Either way, um... Sarah Harding is the African uh, scientist who, she really kicks butt in this one. She uh, studies African predators in the wild, and specifically hyenas, and really she shows up and just totally kicks butt in this. So, pretty cool character. The kids are um, similar in age, they're both about seventh grade. So um, a little older than the previous book, but they're the same age. In the previous book, they were, you know, differing. They were relatives and differing in ages. So uh, I liked that they were more prepared this time. Like the bankroller guy was like, hey, you know, I'm going to have the latest equipment, the latest guns, the latest everything. And, you know, electric vehicles, so they don't make noise. And he, it seemed like he thought of everything. So I really liked that they actually went into it like knowing that things could get crazy. So that was kind of cool. Um, let's see. I wasn't sure. I mean, Ian Malcolm, you know, got injured in the first one and it seemed like he would be the least likely to go back. Like, why would he want to go back? He was even hesitant at the beginning. So he did had, took some convincing, but he ended up going and he gets injured again in this one. So he's kind of just there to get in the way and get injured. But anyways, that's another story. Um, I liked how the locals didn't want to visit the island. It was considered bad luck, curse, whatever. So that kind of plays into the plot of, you know, all of the transportation not wanting to stick around. So that to me, that was a key plot point that was really easily overlooked. So um, the guns this time, they had state of the art and they had lots of them. So that was cool. Um, there were no guns on the island in the previous one, in the original. So the bad guys uh, show up and start stealing eggs. But of course you can't go into a dinosaur nest and just walk up and grab the eggs. So they had a sonic alarm. I really liked that. And of course it, you know, has a problem in that it has a power cord that is connected to the Jeep. So they have a gas Jeep and they use the sonic alarm to scare the dinosaurs off the nest, grab the eggs and get the heck out of there. So that is what the bad guys are doing. The good guys, they are just there to observe. They only want to be there to turn on the cameras and get out of Dodge the next day. So they did bring guns. They are dart guns that have tranquilizer or whatever uh, that supposedly knocks out the dinosaurs. So something that I really liked about both books was I think the attitude of the rich, wealthy individual, John Hammond in the last one and the, um, uh, 
inheritor of the Becky Doll's fortune in this one, they really had an attitude where it was like, I'm going to ignore everyone else's counsel, you know, like everyone else's advice except my own. Like they seem to treat themselves and their decisions above everyone else. They looked down on everyone else and they seem to be like, they weren't used to people telling them no. And I really liked that uh, in that, you know, I don't normally interact with wealthy people. I don't think a lot of people do. And I think some are like that. They fit that mold. And yes, that is kind of a stereotypical, not all wealthy people are snobs, but I, I liked that the mold that that fit into it helped play into the story, added to some of the conflict, right? He shows up to the island before the equipment. Why? Because he doesn't want to be behind and let, you know, somebody else discover it. So he wanted to be the first one to discover it. So that kind of played into the plot. Um, I've said this before, but Sarah Harding just is awesome. She was like my favorite character in this book. Totally cool. And the climbing scene when they're inside the vehicle gave me some uncharted uh and kind of tomb raider vibes like she is hopping around climbing and you know climbing up and down and it just it was super cool i could totally see an uncharted video game or a tomb raider style video game with her as the lead you know just riding the motorcycle around the island and just doing all kinds of cool things climbing and all that stuff so very fun character there um some new dinosaurs that was interesting. There was some camouflage involved, which I was surprised the Jurassic Park didn't reference any of that. So there was some new expanded um, traits that the, the dinosaurs had. Again, with the, the reproducing and stuff, I was kind of unsure, but I really liked the territory, the territorialness that it evolved from having, you know, a nest, right? You have that territory that you're defending, or at least the dinosaurs are. That really didn't come into play as much because the fences were up in the first one. And this, it's just wide open. All the dinosaurs are everywhere. And we did spend a lot more time with the dinosaurs. I feel like with Jurassic Park, it was like, okay, here's a chance encounter. Okay, here's a chance encounter. And here's a chance encounter with Jurassic World. It's like they're surrounded all the time. It did take a little bit to get to the island. There was some setup. It wasn't as long as the first one, but there was still some setup. I think it's like 80 pages before you actually get to the island. But that, that's okay. I think that worked out. You know, this 300 pages that you spend on the island. So some things I didn't like. Uh, I, <laughs> I think I reread it twice, but the explanation of why there weren't... Um, as many prey like predators and prey right there if you have too many predators it'll, they'll wipe out all the prey and it just I, I don't know I think it was a disease or something but it just didn't sit well with me that, that's all uh, I didn't like the still having power after five years of neglect I feel like even a rust free system that it, it uses gold here but i i feel like even a corrosion resistant system there's going to be you know line power lines that get snapped there's going to be you know gas that runs out there's going to be corrosion in the non-gold plated parts so i get that it's part of the story but it, it didn't sit well with me oh <laughs> ian being a liability he just gets hurt and gets in the way like he is the network connector, you know, the connector piece that gets everybody to the island, but he just really gets in the way, so. Um, in this one, the bad guy returns in person. Jurassic Park kind of outsourced it to the computer guy, but here, he, the Drosten or Dresden, he actually shows up in person to harvest the dinosaur eggs. So I did like that part. And uh, here were some quotes real quick. Uh, I had heard the phrase Red Queen before, but I didn't know what it meant without looking it up. In evolutionary theory, this is called the Red Queen phenomenon, Malcolm said, because in Alice in Wonderland, the Red Queen tells Alice she has to run as fast as she can just to stay where she is. 
That's the way evolutionary spirals seem. All the organisms are evolving at a furious pace just to stay in the same balance, to stay where they are. That was pretty neat. Um, you know, when you think of evolution and evolving, it's to like get past some obstacle or to, you know, overcome some change in the environment. And it, it's neat to think of they're just trying to get back to normal or some kind of balance. So definitely applies to humans as well. So this is uh, Sarah Harding right uh, at the end of the motorcycle scene. So uh, I lied. Uh, wait here. Um, she, Kelly stayed by the bike and Sarah moved cautiously forward through the grass. Uh, and really it, you know, Sarah and Kelly, Kelly was riding on the back of Sarah's motorcycle and Sarah told her she only had four or five shots left. And then she says, this is the last one make a count when they are riding alongside a Raptor. And of course, this is, right, lying, dishonesty, it's not a good thing, but her handling of a difficult situation with a young kid who didn't know how to fire a weapon, right, first time using a weapon, it was an interesting dynamic thinking that, you know, the pressure or the stress or make it count, right? And so she even really had additional shots, but I wasn't sure about it, so. Uh, yeah, this one here. This is again, uh, Sarah Harding talking to Kelly after Kelly figures out the computer situation. Uh, very good, said Harding. I think these people owe you your lives, their lives. Not really, Kelly said with a little shrug. Sarah shot her a look. All your life, other people will try to take your accomplishments away from you. Don't you take it away from yourself. Pretty cool advice. And you know, Sarah Harding has her PhD is a proclaimed scientist and super awesome character, kicks butt, gives good advice, just all around awesome. So really this was the <laughs> Sarah Harding show and a few others on an island, kind of like Jurassic Park. So I enjoyed it. I plan on watching the movie. And this is a book that was kept out of the landfill through Discover Books. So as always, buy your books used.